Hello again, uh, statistics students. Today we're going to learn about the least squares regression line. In our last couple of lessons, we learned about the correlation coefficient, which tells us how linear a data set is. Well, if the data set is linear, we should be able to describe it with a line. So today we're going to figure out what is the equation of that line that um, our data is describing. <coughs> Now, I do want to make a couple of points. Ooh, better bring this down here because my picture's in the way. So there is such a thing as what's called an influential point. If you look at this uh, data set <coughs> down here, <coughs> you can see that there's no really no um, regression line, no one regression line that's going to go through that. That's going to have an R value of zero. However, this point up here, you just oops, add in this one point. And because the X values and the S of X's are so strong, you're going to get a much higher R value now. And you can see that this orange line here is going to be, we're now going to get a pretty strong correlation coefficient and we're going to get a line. And it's all because of this one point. So whenever you have a point that is extreme in the X direction, it's way far, um, either a lot bigger or a lot smaller than all the others in the data set, it's going to be influential. <coughs> Similarly, Adding or removing a data point can definitely change R. In fact, it can change the slope of R. For instance, just consider these three data points. Obviously, we have a line with a negative slope going through them. Add this one influential um, data point, and now you can see that a um, regression line would go like this now. It would have a positive slope. You really need to graph your data to see what's going on. <laughs> now, one of the problems that I might have assigned for homework, number 35, asked if you swap the X and Y values, does that change R? I'm going to pause the video for a moment and I'm going to let you think about that. I can't figure out how to pause the video right now. So I'm not going to pause it. So let's say that our data set, these eight points, here's our regression line. Well, when you swap X and Y, you're reflecting your data points over the line Y equals X. Here's Y equals X. Here are my reflected data points. You'll notice that they're just as close to this new regression line as these are to this one. Um, you can think of it um, as far as calculating R, if you swap the X and Y values, what it was the Z sub X value becomes the Z sub Y, what was the Z sub Y becomes the Z sub X. When you multiply them, you get the same number. So R doesn't change. The regression line does, and the slope of the regression line does, but the R value itself doesn't change. <laughs> so regression lines, I want to put a line, the best fit line through that data set. What is the best fit line? We need a mathematical way to describe that. So the way we describe it <coughs> is, I want the line such that, 
and here I've just used four of these data points, but let's, you get the idea. I want the line such that when I put a line through here, I take the Y distance, the vertical distance from the data point to the line, from the data point to the line. So I have D1, D2, D3, D4, I have all those distances. I square those distances because you know in statistics we square everything and that makes it positive anyway. I want to minimize the sum of the squares of the distances from each data point to the line. That's why this um, regression line is called the least squares regression line. <clears throat> now, yes, I'm going fast, but not to worry, you can always pause the video. When we write the equation of a least squares regression line, we always write it as y hat. And the reason we write it as y hat is because we're predicting. And so that's going to be a predicted value. Now, the slope of our regression line, M, well, you put all your data points in, you take the standard D of the Ys, divide it of the Y coordinates, you take the standard D of the X coordinates, and you multiply it by your co uh, correlation coefficient R, that's the slope. Turns out that standard D is positive, standard D is positive. This is why if R is positive, the slope is positive. And if R is negative, the slope is negative. Another very interesting aspect of the least squares regression line is it will always, always, always go through the point X bar, Y bar. The point X bar, Y bar is always, always, always on this line. In other words, if you have a, an equation for your regression line, if you substitute X bar into it, the um, equation will predict Y bar. Because of that, we can get the slope, I mean the uh, Y intercept, B. We substitute X bar and Y bar into the equation. We already know the slope because the slope comes from up here. So then we solve this equation for B. B is equal to Y bar minus M times X bar. Or if you don't want to calculate M, you just want to run it all through at once you can use this equation. All of these values are obtainable using the TI-30, which we use in class. If you use a different calculator, um, you have to figure out how to get those values out of your calculator. If you use a statistical analysis software that doesn't give you all that, you can put in the X values in one column, um, the Y values in another column, and, pro and do, um, yeah, what's the word I'm looking for there? Uh, one variable statistics on both of those columns, that will give you X bar, Y bar, S of X, S of Y. You could un, um, do a correlation um, function that will give you R, unless the uh, program you're using will give you all of this at once. <coughs> We have our handout from Lee Kuchera. <laughs> and since we're learning about um, regression lines, we now have three um, terms we can talk about. <laughs> we know what R is. Now we have a slope for every one unit increase in X, our um, pr uh, model predicts an increase of Y units in the response variable because slope is Y over X. So if X goes up by one, 
um, your y should go up by y. And then the y-intercept. If your x value, your explanatory value, is zero units, our model predicts a response variable of y units. That may not always make sense. <laughs> Think about um, postage rates, for instance, um, as you, or you know, UPS. How much you pay depends on how much something weighs. So if we had a bunch of data and we could run a line through it, eventually then we'd get a line that we'd get um, a y-intercept and it would um, probably be positive. Does it make sense that you would have to pay anything if your package weighed zero? If your package weighed zero, you wouldn't have a package, hence there wouldn't be anything to charge you. So the y-intercept doesn't always make sense, but this is our best definition for it. <coughs> <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. Still with the corona cough. So I'd like to look at this problem on page 488 of my textbook here. Let's try it yourself problem. We want to see if there is a relationship and what is the linear relationship between the salaries of Major League Baseball players and the attendance at their games. So we have to go back to page 469. And turns out that's already graphed for us, I believe. It is. So here's the salary in millions of dollars for a team. Here's the average attendance at their home games. Yeah, I'd say that kind of looks linear. So the data is given to us in the book. If we're still using this book when you're viewing this video, go ahead and enter the data. We've already determined it looks um, somewhat linear and calculate those five special numbers, X bar, Y bar, R, S sub X, and S sub Y. Pause the video while you do that. <laughs> So here are the numbers that I get, and I um, didn't round very much. I went out four decimal places on everything. If you round too much here, when you do your slope and your y-intercept, you're gonna be using rounded, um, rounded numbers in here. You're going to be, um, you're gonna have rounding errors, too much of a rounding error. So I went you know, to what, the 10,000th place here, so that when I divide S sub Y by S sub X and multiply by this number, I've been going out to four decimal places. I'm not gonna be off very much at all. And then I took those answers and rounded them off um, to four decimal places. Either that or I just pulled the numbers out of the calculator. Don't exactly remember how I did this because I don't have a TI-30 because I make this video because I'm stuck in corona confinement. But anyway, I wrote the numbers down and I have some M's and some B's here. So I now have a regression equation. Y hat equals 165X plus this, which means um, y, the predicted number of people at your home games would be 165 times uh, the salaries plus this amount. So if we look at the y-intercept, if you didn't pay your team anything, this says that you'd have um, almost 15,000 people in the stands. Clearly that doesn't make sense. 
but it does explain what a y-intercept is. I talked about this in the last video. If you draw, if you have any data set and you put your data points in a rectangle like that, you're always, always, always going to get a correlation coefficient of zero. And therefore, this y isn't predictive. This line isn't predictive. Because if I said, what if x is here? Well, my guess is I would either get a y value here or here. Not here. Not very predictive. What if I come way out here? The line would predict a y value of this. We don't even know if it's going to stay linear. <laughs> Correlation coefficient of zero. <clears throat> Lastly, <clears throat> I want to show you a graphic. I want to show you why it's so, so, so important to graph your data before you ever do any calculations. <clears throat> I'm going to show you four very different data sets. And these data sets have the same R value and the same regression line. You'll see why graphing is so important. And go to the next share screen. And I can't find it. All right, I'm back. And here's what I want to show you. <clears throat> so here are my four data sets. Take a look at the X's for data set A, B, and C. Those X's are all the same. Data set D, obviously very different. Now you'll notice that the y values are different for each. So let's go here. Here's data set A, and here's the regression line going through it. Here's data set B, and here's the roulette regression got laugh going through it. Here's C and D. All four of those data sets have the same correlation coefficient um to several decimal places and the regression lines have the same slope and y intercept to a few decimal places if you had to choose which one of those um lines or if you had to choose which one of those data sets would be um, best predicted by the regression line which data set would you pick What do you think of this one? I mean, obviously the best fit line for this set of data over here, were it not for this one influential point, this would just be a vertical line. You trust that point? You can't just throw it out without reason. <laughs> but I would question whether that's good data. And if it is good data, then you've, got, you've really got something going on here. But I would suggest that maybe this data set isn't linear. So this line isn't a good predictor. Let's go over here to C. Looks like all these data points are perfectly in a row, except this one. I'd go back and measure again, just to make sure that this wasn't a mistake in recording your data. And if it is, here's the line. Would you wanna use this line to predict a Y value for X equals say 16? I'm not so sure. Here, it's obvious the data are not linear. because You have these data points below, and then a whole bunch of data points above, then some data points below. There's a pattern there. It looks like the data set's parabolic. Why would you trust this line to predict Y values for parabolic data? 
data set A is actually the one that's best predicted by this line. Now you might say, okay, well, for X equals seven, the line predicts this and we get this. That's right. Um, I'm not saying it's the greatest predictor. And as you can see, we have these data points splattered above and below the line. That's what I call that data cloud. The thinner that data cloud is, the higher your correlation coefficient. In fact, you might want to go back on the to that part of the video, enter those data and find out what the correlation coefficient is. And for all four of these data sets, it'll be the same, oddly enough. But what you see here is you have, we go from left to right, below, above, above, below, below, above, on, below, above, below, on. There's no pattern there. It's like a shotgun blast. That's what you want to see in, in um, data about a regression line. If there's a pattern in your data about a regression line, then that line is not a good predictor uh, for you, it's, it's, I wouldn't use that uh, regression line at all. All righty, so that's the end of today's lesson. Hope you got something out of it. Again, I highly encourage you to go back and take a look at those four data sets, calculate the slope, y-intercept, and r-value, and confirm that they really do um, have the same values even though those data sets are so different. I want to reinforce to you that is exactly why we always, always, always graph our data. And I guess that's the end of um, this video. Have a great one.